G'day. Welcome to the Bowers Repair Workshop in Sydney. I love this place. It's got all the tools and gadgets you need to repair items, fix things, to stop them from going to landfill, creating items out of reclaimed material and teaching people how to do that. Over the next few weeks, I'll be covering things like sharpening up your tools, how to fix a broken shovel, and today we'll be talking tools and tuning up an old pruning saw. We get a lot of old tools coming into the bower, and they've seen years of neglect. They're rusty, they're a bit grubby, but with a little bit of TLC, we can get them back into working order. It can be difficult to know what makes a good tool when it's hidden beneath all that rust. It's a little bit easier to know what makes a bad tool. Something like this, these secateurs, flimsy plastic handles, you just know that that's not going to prune your lemon tree. Like, that's not a tool, that's just a tool-shaped object. Another thing to avoid, if you can help it, is something like this. You'll see these saws in the hardware store. They've got hardened teeth and they stay sharper longer at the beginning, but then it's extremely difficult to sharpen. They're not designed to be sharpened again, they're designed to be chucked out. Even though it looks like a piece of junk, I reckon this brewing saw's got way more going for it. The handle can be removed, all the rust can be taken off the metal. We can rejuvenate the wood with a bit of oil and then we can sharpen it up time and time again. A good thing to look out for when choosing tools is can you separate out the parts for cleaning and repair? And for this pruning saw, now it's a part we can pop the metal plate into a vinegar bath. It's just ordinary household white vinegar. You could go and get some steel wool uh, and some vinegar and scrub the rust off straight away, but I prefer to stick it in a bath because it's just basically a bit easier. So I let the vinegar do the work. I've got all sorts of different rusty tools in here that have been bubbling away for a week, and it is bubbling away. It's still pulling that rust off and doing all the work for us. So here's a pruning saw that I put in about a week ago. And as you can see, it won't need any scrubbing at all. All the rust is gone. All I'm going to do is just give it a quick rinse off. I'm wiping down the saw blade with a rag just to remove the moisture, putting some linseed oil onto the handle to help preserve it. And with that oily rag, I can wipe some linseed oil onto the saw blade as well to protect it from rusting in the future. OK, so now we can put the handle back on, which will happen seamlessly. Oh, yes. So put that in. Sweet. I'm securing the metal plate in the vise. Don't worry if you don't have a saw vise like this. There are ways around it, and you'll find tips on the Gardening Australia website. So before we start sharpening our pruning saw, we need to do a little bit of wood theory. So a timber that we use used to be a tree, and when it was a tree, it has all these vessels running up and down it, transporting nutrients and water, um, and it also gives the strength to the tree. When we chop that down, we get timber, and we call those vessels the grain. And that's where the strength is in the timber. So you'll find there are two different types of saws, and they're sharpened in different ways to address the timber and address that grain. So the rip cut saw is for cutting along the grain. Each of its teeth are like little chisels. The other type of saw is a crosscut saw. And these teeth are sharpened so that each of these little teeth here have got a beveled edge, much like a knife, and they actually cut or slice the fibres across when you're cutting across the grain. And so our pruning saw is a, is a crosscut saw. We're going to be chopping through branches, and so we're going to sharpen it slightly differently than we would a rip saw. We need this file here, which is a feather edge file. So let's go do it. So now what I'm doing is running the flat back of the file over the teeth, and this is called jointing. All right, so we've joined the saw, and that means that all the teeth are even, and that when we cut with it, that every single one of those tooth is going to do some cutting and it's going to work more efficiently. So when I start my filing, I want my file to be level across like this. And I'm just getting it to match, basically, that little gullet. And then we want to twist it on a slight angle, about 20 to 15 degrees. On these older saws, they've been sharpened before. You'll find that a lot of the time it's just going to sit in nicely to where it, it needs to go. And just a couple of passes, and you can see that I've exposed bare metal. What we want to try and do is be consistent. So I'm in that first tooth. I'm going to come over, skip a tooth, and then... So I'm doing every second tooth, because each of these teeth has a, a knife edge, one on the back and one on the front. As I go along, this pass is sharpening the knife edge on the back of one tooth and the front of the other tooth. So what I'm, what I'm doing as I go along as well is I'm looking that, that my teeth are coming up to meet in about a sharp point. So you might want to use earmuffs with this when you're doing it. 
It's not the most pleasant sound in the world, but it's still pretty bloody satisfying. All right, so we've gone through and done one set of teeth, skipping one, and now I'm going to come back and do the ones that I've missed. And I'm going to do this on the opposing angle. So this is doing the other side of the tooth. You could send your saws off to get sharpened for about 20 bucks, and you'd get them back in a week. But if you just take a little bit of time on the weekend to sharpen these up, you'll have a pretty much brand new saw within 20 minutes, I reckon. Or six minutes on Gardening Australia. And now there's one more thing we need to do before we start using it, and that's set it. So on saws like this, on, on all saws pretty much, uh, the teeth are set at alternate sides. So one tooth is set to the left, one to the right, one to the left, one to the right, and so on and so forth. And what that does is when you're sawing, it creates a channel that's wider than the body of the saw, and it allows the saw to travel freely through that channel. And that's good for technique as well. If you're sawing at your lemon tree and it starts to bind a little bit, it might be because you've come out of alignment of that channel and it's starting to pinch. And so as opposed to pulling hard, you can just try and realign and it should go a lot smoother. So there's a couple of ways you can set your saw and you should all be able to do this at home pretty easily. All you need is a stick, a little nail punch and a hammer and we can do that now. So with my pruning saw supported with this timber, I can go to my first tooth and give it a little whack. And that's going to bend it down a little bit. Then I'm going to skip a tooth and do another one. Skip a tooth. Go to the next one. And then once they're all done, I've gone all the way across, I'll flip the saw over and I'll do the other teeth, which will point out the other side. It'll give you a nice set on your saw. So it's a pretty effective way with some really simple tools. So there. Old tools need a little bit of work. But I reckon the repair work is rewarding. Now let's go test it. Oh, she's cutting good. Your beauty. Works a treat. As gardeners, your tools are by your side every step of the way, so look after them. Next time, I'll show you how easy it is to repair a broken handle on your favourite shovel and give it a bit of a makeover.